Okay, so just recently, Matt Risinger from The Build Show visited Queensland, visited Australia, and he got a really good look at the way we build up there with steel construction. So Joey, what's the problem with steel construction? Before we go into the problem, we want to explain quite quickly why people build with steel and what's the benefit. Usually the number one reason why people build with steel is to go against termites. Typical timber construction is very prone to termites, especially in the wetter part of Australia, it's very high risk of termite attack to the timber in the house. So that's one of the biggest reasons why we have a fair number of steel frame construction. Also, typically steel frames are quicker, better dimensional coordination, more accurate build, etc, etc. However, the number one prime issue with steel construction is thermal conductivity. Let's have a quick look at what we got here. That's the typical timber framing material, the 2x4 in the US, and I think we also call it 2x4 from mm. the old scale, mm -hmm. which is um, in here we use pine. Yep. And this is a typical steel framing material, the uh, metal stud. In here, Australia, we our building code requires to have that thermal brake material attached to the face of the steel stud to improve the thermal performance of this system. However, there is a very common misconception. A lot of homeowners or even some of the tradies believe as soon as we put this thermal bricks on the steel frame, it will be comparable to the two by four timber framing. But is it true? To prove that we've created this mock-up here. Now, the other thing that I'd like to reinforce here is that uh, the way we see this material used is not like this. There's always a wrap that is in between the thermal break and the steel. And also in some circumstances, they might just install this where they're gonna be putting in some additional C channel for your facade installation. And this might not be continuous in the actual build. So the actual functionality of this product has a question mark, but the way we're installing this and using this is also a little bit questionable in whether it actually makes much of a difference at all. Yep, the original intent for this product is to stop the conduction heat transfer across to the steel frame. Mm -hmm. Typically, we only need these thermal bricks where we got either brick ties or when we got the top hat for the fixing of the cladding system. So the conductivity of these two materials, uh, they're pretty much just complete opposites. Can we just run through this test or this rig setup and how we've decided to set these up, Joseph? For this experiment, we've created a box where we are going to heat it up to simulate the summer condition. And in here, we divided this plaster wall into four sections. The reason why we put the plaster on the outside is because it's easier for we taking footage of it. And the first section here, as we draw up, is the timber frame with rock wood insulation bed in between. After the timber frame, we got a one inch, 25 millimeter thick XPS insulation to minimize the heat transfer across to the steel framing. The next section, we got the bare steel frame with the same thickness of wall wool insulation in there. Like the previous, we have another 25 mil of XPS. Then this section of metal stud frame, we got the metal stud with that thermal brake material. And then last but not least, we have the bare steel stud frame 
but with a sheet of 25 mil, one inch thick XPS board on the external side before we fill that with rock wool insulation. We try to compare the international practice, mm -hmm. the cold comply, Australian practice, and then the old day before the building code requires thermal breaks compared to the typical timber construction. Yep. Now, the other thing that we've done here as well is we've put in a vapor permeable wrap directly abutted to the steel stud frame on the back of these. So the thermal break is on the outside of that vapor permeable material, which is how they the manufacturer's document. instruction. Correct. And the XPS on the back of the steel stud with the continuous insulation, that's on the outside, outside. of the wrap as well. Yep. So they're screwed in and there's a mechanical fixing to screw both this material, which is the, the thermal, thermal brake. Break, that's mechanically fixed as well with buttons. Okay, now let's look at the surface temperature. But before we go into it, we have the air temperature in the warehouse is 21 degree at the moment. We are going to check the internal surface temperature, which is similar, well, which is simulating the Australian summer. And we can see from this reading, the internal surface temperature is 37, 38 degrees Celsius. And based on these simulated indoor and outdoor temperature difference, we can have a check. In here, we are looking at the timber frame construction. You can barely see where uh, the timber frame. And you can see on the plasterboard here, where the plasterboard junction, we got a slightly hotter temperature there because the air can be leaking from there. Now, let's check the plasterboard surface temperature. As we look at this thermal image, the, the screw fixing is lighting up brightly. But when we look at it, the timber frame, you can barely see it. The timber frame temperature is 23 degrees while the insulated portion is 22 and a half, which is fairly closely following each other. And then we move to the bare steel framing, 26, while the insulated portion is 22.6. And now we move to the next section, which is the thermal break portion, is actually slightly warmer than the bare steel, but it could be because it's well protected, not losing as much heat. This is a funny finding, which is a bit unexpected. Mm. We would expect the thermal break slightly cooler, but in this setup, it's actually warmer. And then we move to the continuous insulation, and we can see one quite interesting finding. The side that is close to the thermal brake frame, even though we have the XPS board separating them, is warmer than the other side. But I think because the way how we finish the insulation board is just to the edge of the metal frame, and it may lead to some diagonal heat transfer reaching the metal frame and it warms up the frame a fair bit compared to this side, which is a butter to the end of the um, box setup. I mean, this could also be due to air infiltration as well. I it mean, could warm be. air inside yeah. the box is expanding. Yep. But um, it just goes to show, like, from a, a comparison perspective, timber from a thermal bridging perspective, hands down, hands down, makes a massive difference. I mean, the metal with the continuous insulation on the outside is, is a pretty good... Uh, pretty decent yeah, performer. ...solution, but air tightness of that thermal insulation layer is also critical, especially at the junction to the ceiling. Otherwise, this won't work either. Yep. Like, air tightness is critical. And, 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 and the finding of this side of the frame is warmer than the other side. The recommendation for anyone that is doing continuous insulation mm -hmm. on the external side is on the edge of each insulation board where you're fixing 
back to the metal stud. It is highly advised you put some kind of adhesive there to seal your insulation board back to the wrap that is stick to the steel frame. That way you minimize any unintended air going behind your continuous insulation board. And of course, after you install all the board, you need to tape the junction. Correct. Now, overseas, no one does any of this. Everyone is of the clear understanding. There is no conversation around this being acceptable. It's all about continuous insulation on the outside of a highly conductive metal stud well, framed building. I think mid to northern Europe and the northern part of the US and in Canada, mm -hmm. even when they build in timber, they still have continuous insulation on the outside. Now, the only issue obviously for us though, by having continuous insulation, is the combustibility of the insulation that you're putting around the perimeter. Uh, we do have a lot of bushfire prone areas here, so that's something that really needs to be considered when using a metal stud framed home, and you're gonna be having to use continuous insulation. The majority of the continuous airtight insulation products that we can use are quite flammable products. Well, and that's why we need to make a disclaimer here. We use XPS board on the wall. It's purely for easy handling. Yes. If you are building a real home, don't do that. <laughs> the minimum you need is PIR board, yes. which is non-flammable, but still combustible. Yep. But the real answer for insulation consistency and getting a decent quality home with a metal stud construction is a continuous insulation board around the perimeter of your home, including on the ceilings and making sure that the continuation of the air barrier and the thermal barrier is detailed to be there. So Joey, what, why aren't we commonly putting in continuous insulation here in Australia? Well, usually there are two major reasons. Number one is because the size of the block that you get is shrinking by the year. If you don't get a wide block to begin with, every single centimeter we try to save to make the inside bigger. The other reason is the homeowner may think they need to invest a fair bit of money to have a continuous insulation around the home. It's not cheap, but think about it. You do it once, and is lifetime in your home. And it may be similar to the price you spend on stone bench top, which you can renovate in 10 years, 15 years, and easily put your stone bench top back in. But if you try to upgrade your house later with the continuous insulation, you may not be able to do it because of planning restriction. Your town planning may not allow you to widen your home by the 50, 60 mil. So if you are building a new home, try to incorporate that into the design. If you are in area like termite prone that you need to build with steel. So Joey, what's the R value of this? Well, these thermal bricks, they are typically R0.2 mm -hmm. to R0.25, yeah. depends on different brand. Right. But when you think about it, this 25 mil one inch thick insulation yes. is R1. Yeah. And when you look at the two compare, this thermal brick is already 12 mil yeah. thick. Yeah. Why wouldn't you go yeah. all the way yes. to that? Yes, yeah, and then it's continuous all around. It's beyond me. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, does it? For such a little amount of space, space you, yep. you're getting way more R value and the potential for it to be continuous yep. is uh, very valuable. <laughs>